Hello, everyone. This is Junema Isimilin, your OLC, and welcome to the GE course, Understanding the Self. Now, for our learning outcomes, so after this discussion, of course, as learners, you are expected to first discover the meaning of psychology, then list the various fields of psychology, third, define various fields of psychology, then lastly, we have discover the history of psychology. Now, today we will be discussing all about psychology. Now, when we say psychology, it comes from the Greek word psyche, and it means breath, okay? It could be a spirit or soul, and we have from the word logia, and it means study of mind. So in other words, psychology is the scientific study of behavior okay, and our mental processes. So everything that goes in our mind okay, that could actually affect how we behave okay, in any situation and in front of other people and how we process things in our mind and how we act upon them. Okay, so these are all the things that are involved in the study of psychology. Another thing when it comes to psychology, this is an empirical science. That is why psychology is also a part of science. So this relies on empirical evidence as a way of knowing about how we think, about how we feel, and how we behave. So this involves research. This involves processes, okay, a procedure. Okay, so that's why it's called empirical science. Now, how about the term theory? Since most of the ideas are called as theories, okay, which are all introduced okay, by our philosophers, if not philosophers, maybe psychologists, okay, or those who studied okay, ideas, theories, when it comes to the human behavior and our mental processes. Now, when I say theory, this is a general set of principles proposed to explain how a number of separate facts are related. So from the gathered data, from the gathered facts, okay, they would come up with a set of rule, with a set of principle, and they call it as a theory. Now, a theory allows you to first propose reasons for relationships. So what is the relationship between this fact and with this fact? or it could be derived explanations. So there are phenomenon, then the, there could be an explanation out of this uh, problem, out of this situation, out of this thing that happened. Then we have to make predictions. So you would predict, okay? You would hypothesize, you would come up with a certain assumptions. So let's continue with the goals of psychology. Now, psychologist seeks to first describe, okay, explain, then third, predict, then lastly, of course, influence behavior and mental processes. So these are all the goals, okay, or the uh, something that uh, would result out of this study of psychology. Now, how about the psychologist? Okay, so what do they do? So first we have research. I made mention a while ago that the study of psychology involves research, process or procedure, wherein there should be a gathering of facts or data. 
Now, there are two kinds of research. We have the pure research or the basic and applied research. So when we say basic and applied research, I guess this is what we usually do now in most of the researches, wherein whatever the result coming from the data that uh, were gathered, we have to act upon it. We have to do a certain action. We have to do something about this in order to deal with this problem or with this issue that we are studying or researching. Then we have also practice. So this involves clinical and counseling. Then we have teaching. So in other words, psychologists can do a lot of things. So they're not just into research. They're not just into studying the mental processes or human behavior, but they can also teach. Now, how about the fields of psychology? So let's try to look into them. So these are the fields. So first we have clinical psychology. So it involves or it usually involves conducting tests and examinations to assess the mental health of a person. So in order for them to examine or assess the mental health of a person, so if we have what we call the physical health, okay, we have also what we call the mental health. So how are you thinking? Okay, so that involves our mental health. How do you manage stress? How do you manage situations, difficult situations? How do you manage problems? How do you manage all of these things? Okay, so that involves our mental health, how we deal with this. Okay, so it's all in the head. Okay, so what's going on in our head? So that's the mental health. And I'm just not sure what kind of tests uh, this uh, psychologist or experts would do, but uh, this has something to do with the clinical psychology, wherein they would examine, maybe they would ask questions, there would be a series of questions. If not, uh, maybe there could be anything that they could be able to just apply or do, okay, maybe uh, to at least deal okay, or assess, examine the mental health of a person. The most of them, I guess, they are using the observation method and the questioning okay, or interview. Then we have also counseling. So this branch of psychology is quite similar with that of the clinical psychology that focus on assessing the mental health, again, mental health of an individual, but the focus is mostly on the common problems. Unlike in clinical, I think it's more extreme, but this one counseling, so this is focused more on the common problems or just the light issues okay, that are experienced by this person in terms of his or her marriage, maybe, but work stresses and anything under the sun that could cause this person to have issues okay, and problems may be wherein this person needs help. Then we have also the school, okay, school psychology. So the, the goal of this or this field aims to improve students' performance in schools. That is why we have also experts in schools Okay, it could be in public or in private, right? We're in the, the role of these people would be to help our students in making them uh, better, okay? When it comes to their academic performances, to motivate them maybe, or to find the cause of uh, whatever issues or problems they are experiencing. Why is it that they are not excelling in this field? or is there an area wherein they need help, okay, so that they can be able to improve their academic performances. So that's what uh, this field, okay, would do. Then we have also educational. So quite related, right, with school. Okay, so however, okay, educational is 
dealing with testing related with activities. Okay, it's more on the activities in education that may focus on curriculum. So it's based on curriculum wherein they could offer activities. So scientific ex experiments also to ensure validity and reliability of tests and other special needs of the students. Okay, so this one is focusing more on really testing okay areas wherein the student the the learner or the student needs help special help okay or it could be to give them activities that are basically based on the curriculum okay of this institution or of this school and like in school psychology the goal is to make the student better in terms of his or her academic performance. Then we have also developmental psychology. So when we say developmental from the word develop, okay, so there's development, okay, so the, there's growth. Okay, so this field of psychology deals with the study of the developmental changes in human behavior. So as we develop, as we grow, okay, as we become adults, okay, and we become uh, older, so there are changes as to our behaviors and even our actions. So that's from birth to death. Okay, so that is why it's called as developmental psychology. Then we have also personality. So the, this field aims to examine the differences and similarities in human personalities and how these personalities reflect on their actions. So when it comes to our similarities and differences as to our actions, as to our behavior, okay, so that's personality. Then social, it focuses on the study of humans and how we interact okay, with our fellow men and with our environment. So how we deal okay, with other people, that's social. Then environmental psychology, it focuses on improving the physical environment. So this is between the person and with that of the environment, okay, the surroundings. Okay, so that could be environmental psychology. Then we have experimental. So this is focused on the conduct of experiments and research in laboratories. So there would be the use of machines or the use of technology, okay, to be able to study further on the mental processes of a man. So that is experimental. Then we have also industrial. So this one is focused on the industry, of course, from the word industrial okay, or industry. In, it includes operations, processes, and human involvement. And this one has three sub points. So we have organizational, human factors, and consumer. So these are all part of the certain industry. When we say industry, it could be a company, an organization, institution, an establishment, wherein there's this organization or hierarchy, positions, rankings, okay, or job placements maybe, wherein a certain person should be suitable to a certain job okay, that he or she has to do. Then we have health. So this is the application of principles of psychology for the treatment and or prevention of disease. Then sports, of course, this focuses on studying activities related to sports. Then forensic, so it provides assistance used often in law enforcement so the role of the psychologist in uh, crime investigation okay, would be to administer tests to profile a suspect 
okay, or to assess the mental condition or the mental state of the victim. So this is what they usually do, forensic psychology, in order for them to really study why is it that the suspect is behaving this way and so that they can be able to also uh, get maybe data or information on how they're going to catch this suspect, especially if uh, the person or the suspect is on the run. Okay, so they have to trace okay, kung, uh, what, whichever, okay, uh, wherever, okay, wherever uh, this person would go. Okay, so they would try to study that so they can be able to really trace the places and be able to finally catch this suspect. Then we have the evolution of psychology. So I guess we'll just run through this because this is quite long. Okay, and I'm not sure if you, your, uh, this, if this uh, slide is visible right now. Okay, but anyway, when it comes to the evolution of psychology, uh, this involves simply the psychologists or known people under psychology, under the study of the mental processes and human behavior. So if we are to look back, of course, we'll start from 428 to 347 BC, and that was the time of Plato. And then we have Aristotle, then... We have Thomas, Rene Descartes, John Locke. Okay. Up to, we have here, okay, there are so many names. Harry, okay, so we have Claude, Claude Steele and Harry Triandis. All right, so I guess uh, we can have a separate uh, session maybe for this, or if not, you can just go through this slide when this is already uploaded. Okay, so just simply the, the, when you look back, okay, so you'll begin with Plato. So uh, that's the starting point or his, the starting point. And then look through the different names under the study of the mental processes and human behavior. Okay, we're in, they just simply adopted one study, one theory to another, then they would, they would expound, okay, or it could be they would disagree, then try to introduce another theory or idea. Now we have here the approaches of psychology. So we have experimental psychology and this started with what we call structuralism. So the known name for this one, we have Edward Titchener. Okay, so it says here that structuralism breaks conscious experiences into, it could be break into first, objective sensations wherein we are pertaining with our senses and then we have subjective feelings we were in the there there's this emotion the memories that we have and even the dreams so these are all involved with our subjective feelings so this is the breakdown of what we call the structuralism okay the conscious experiences so the mind functions by combining this too, the objective and with that of the subjective. Then another name for functionalism, William James. Functionalism focus on behavior in addition to mind and consciousness. So this is according to William James. Used to uh, direct, okay, or use direct observations to supplement introspection or how you think of your own feelings, your own emotions, then influenced by Darwin's theory of evolution or natural selection. So a while ago, okay, a structure of uh, structural structuralism, okay, involves only the objective and with that of the subjective, right? But this one, we have already the mind, okay, and the consciousness. Okay, so focus on the behavior in addition to the mind and the consciousness. So there's behavior already. Then behaviorism, this focuses on learning observable or anything that can be measured. Okay, so we have the name John B. Watson or John Brothers Watson. So John is the proponent of these, uh, what we call little Albert study. 
Then we have behaviorism by B.F. Skinner. So psychologists who develop operant conditioning, okay, then also known for Beyond Freedom and Dignity, which was producer written in 1971. Okay, operant conditioning, it's a uh, focus on the conditioning, okay, of the behavior of a certain person. And I guess uh, they use animals, okay, in order for them to uh, apply this operant conditioning theory, wherein they would reward, okay, this animal then uh, a certain behavior is already observed since the animal was conditioned. And then we have gestalt psychology. So the known names, we have Max and Wolfgang. Okay, so gestalt is the study of perception and influence on thinking and problem solving. So it focuses on thinking, it focuses on how we solve problems. Also, perception are more than some of their parts. Okay, so it's, it is the study of perception and active and purposeful. This is active and purposeful since, of course, you will need to solve problems. Then insight learning since this is something to do with thinking. Now, how about psychoanalysis? So the known name here would be Sigmund Freud. Then... When we say psychoanalysis, it makes unconscious conscious. So the unconscious part of the mind, okay, would be awakened and become conscious. So it restrains trauma through therapy. I guess this is what they usually use right now for people who would like to uh, trace back their past or if they have forgotten memories, maybe then they can be able to use psychoanalysis. Or if there are traumas and they would like to get back to the cause of the trauma so that they can be able to deal this trauma. Then cognition affects behavior. The known name here would be Edward Tolman. So it says here, animals could learn by observation. Okay, so behavioral approach. Although it says here, it could not make sense anymore. Then we have cognition effects behavior from George Miller. So research on memory. So for George Miller launched this, uh, what we call cognitive revolution in psychology. So cognition is all in the head and it affects how we behave or how we act. Also a known name for cognition effects behavior, Ulrich Nieser. So, Cognition or cognitive psychology, I should say, is concerned with higher order mental functions such as intelligence, thinking, language, memory, and decision making. So as I made mention, uh, cognitive is all in the head, in the mind. Okay, so it works there. Okay, so certainly it's really considered to be the higher order mental function wherein you really have to think, you really have to analyze, okay. So even decision-making processes, we use that. Now, psychology does not operate as a vacuum. It throws facts from other related sciences. So since this is also a science, which is psychology, so it also gets facts, information, data from other sciences, like anthropology, which is the study of man's culture and man's past. Then sociology, of course, the origin and evaluation of human society, how we interact, how we deal with other people and with our environment. Then physiology, of course, our physical body and how the body operates. So of course, it involves the organs, the parts of our body. Then biology, of course, the study of life or study of living organisms. So of course, we are living Okay, we are living organism or we are, we have life. Okay, so that is why we are also part of this psychology. Then economics. Okay, so it involves production, distribution and consumption. So as humans, we are part of what we call economics since we, we consume products, we buy products, we sell products. Then political science. So this is something to do with origins, organizations, principles, and operations of the government. So we are part of our, uh, we are also part of what we call government since we belong to a certain society. 
then chemistry, composition, and property of substance and changes. So remember that even our body, we have also chemicals, okay, and that could also okay uh, affect okay and even the the substances that we intake right could also affect how we behave and how we process things then psychiatry this is a field of medicine concerned with treatment of mental illness again this is it has something to do with the mental processes so that is why part of psychology is uh you know still they are quite interconnected now, in order for us to end this session, I know that there are so many facts, okay, that we really have to digest, okay, but I do hope that at least uh, through this quote, okay, you can be able to sum up everything. So it says here, I got this from quotehd.com from Paul Valery, a French poet. So it says here, the purpose of psychology is to give us a completely different idea of the things we know best. So I know that you have already knowledge, or you know a lot of things, okay? Maybe in some ways you're aware of your personality, of yourself, and how everything works in your head, how you process everything and how you behave, okay? So I do hope that through psychology, okay, through the run through that we did a while ago, or at least uh, to just uh, get the gist, okay, or points, of what we just discussed, then we can be able to at least connect it with or try to completely okay, have this unique or a better or a different idea on how we know okay, things or the things that we already know best about ourselves. So that ends our discussion on psychology. And I do hope that you learn many things from this lesson.